A warm welcome to today's video explaining the units of applied ethics for philosophy A level. I will begin by breaking down the content that you need and the video will finish with the technique that you will need to answer 25 mark questions on the unit of applied ethics. The AQA exam board, they do not give very much detail at all at what you will need to talk about. The reason for that is because it's just taking what you already know about the three normative ethical theories and then applying them to issues. And so everything that I've got written down here is just advice and just examples of what you could include. I'm not going to go over them in massive depth because the depth you should already understand with the coverage of the units. And I've got videos previously on, on these ethical theories. So stealing. Now utilitarianism, that was a bit big, um, can justify stealing, at least act utilitarianism can. So stealing might be justified uh, when stealing would benefit a person, it would maximise the pleasure and minimise the pain of the person, uh, specifically with having minimal impact to other people. So a single mother who needs to steal baby formula to feed, to feed her child, um, if she stole it from a big corporation, it might not have a big impact for them, but it would have a big positive impact in reducing the suffering of her and her child. And so we can use the hedonic calculus to show that stealing is uh, justifiable in Bentham's formulation of utilitarianism. Now, for Mill's formulation, it's slightly different. We could form a rule never to steal. And this could be a hard rule or sort of a soft rule, a weak rule that is sometimes broken. Um, and that's because uh, stealing almost always leads to suffering and will also create a society um, that isn't pleasurable to live in. And so we can form a rule that suggests that stealing is, is wrong. Now, Kant is very easy to apply to the issues of stealing and the issues of lying, less helpful for the other two. But for stealing, we can use the first formulation to show that stealing creates a contradiction in conception. Uh, or we can apply the second formulation because stealing violates the humanity of, of agents. You might actually let me have the thing which I steal if I give you a good enough argument. But if I just take it, I don't let you think for yourself. For virtue ethics, stealing is always wrong. So for most of the issues, um, Aristotle is quite holistic and lets the agent reason. But that isn't the case with stealing. Stealing for Aristotle is always wrong. Uh, and in this way, it's an absolutist approach. Now, a modern contemporary virtue ethicist, he may or she may disagree. Um, the reason is, if I steal uh, a up-and-coming new drug from a hospital, which let's just suppose has no impact on whether it gets passed, no one will know, I work at this hospital and I'm trusted, it hasn't been passed yet, and by the time it passes, I expect my partner to have died. If I steal it, I help them, maybe it helps them, um, maybe it saves their life. I'm using some virtues there and I value this relationship really highly. In some cases, in a modern context, it may be permissible, but for Aristotle, certainly not. For simulated killing, utilitarianism and Kant are both useless. Um, and that's because it re relies on evidence, empirical evidence, that we do not have. Um, there's no conclusive evidence either way in whether simulated killing, which is fine in and of itself, leads to real-world violence, to real-world pain and suffering. And so for utilitarianism, they need to wait because either simulated killing uh, does lead to real-world aggression and therefore it's wrong, or it does not and therefore it's permissible. For Kant, there's no contradiction, no inconsistency, uh, sorry, inconsistency with simulated killing. Um, but if a genuine link is shown to reduce compassion, for example, 
uh, then we have a duty not to. But as I said, we don't have that evidence yet. For Aristotle, he can provide quite a strong, quite an effective approach. Uh, he can show that there's an opportunity cost. If I spend all day gaming, uh, playing Call of Duty or, or GTA or something, um, that comes at the cost of performing other things in the real world that is improving my character. And so it's not that simulated killing is wrong in and of itself, it's just that it's not improving me, it's not improving the agent, it's not helping me reach eudaimonia. And so I should avoid it um, because I need to develop other virtues. Now, there is some nuance here. Aristotle did like Greek theatre, uh, which you could consider theatre a type of simulated killing. The issue here, though, is that there was no actual violence on stage. It would all be reported by characters as opposed to shown on stage. And so that counter doesn't work. In terms of eating animals, the utilitarian approach here is quite good. Uh, Bentham has this idea of commensurability. All pleasures are equal. My pleasure, your pleasure, a chicken or a pig or a cow's pleasure as well is equal. Our suffering is equal. And so, in the same way that I don't want to suffer, nor do you, uh, we should reduce the pain, the suffering of animals, and so we shouldn't kill them just because we want to, just because we get some mild pleasure from eating them. That doesn't justify the amount of suffering uh, and the scale of suffering that is present in factory farms, for example. Uh, and this line of thinking was developed by Singer later on. Uh, Singer, Peter Singer is still uh, knocking about today. So if you're interested, consider reading his work. Uh, Kant's approach is not helpful at all, really. Um, Kant argues that animals do not have the ability to reason. They don't have free will and simply they don't matter in a moral sense at all. And so we can do what we want with them because their suffering uh, doesn't matter. They don't have any ability to reason and so we don't need to worry. Now, deliberate punishment of animals um, can be considered wrong and the reason is that might have an impact on the agent. So if I'm just going around kicking every pigeon I see, that isn't creating a compassionate person. Um, and I do have an imperfect duty to be compassionate. And so although the suffering of the pigeon doesn't matter, I shouldn't deliberately punish uh, and cause animals to suffer because of the impact on me. Next, we move on to Aristotle. For him, eating meat was totally fine. A, a modern virtue ethicist may need to adapt this approach because of the vast punishment the vast suffering uh, that we see in factory farms. The problem with this is that we're being led by pleasure, we're being led by greed, we're being led by convenience to consume these products that we don't really, in most cases, need to consume. And so instead we should observe the virtues of compassion and temperance. Temperance here is a really key idea. Temperance means to not indulge in some virtues or some pleasures, sorry, you shouldn't indulge in some pleasures because of the pursuit of other virtues. So not eating the meat, although it tastes nice, because actually I'm trying to observe the virtue of compassion instead. Lying here. Now, for the utilitarian, lying can not only be permissed, um, but actually, sometimes you might be obliged to lie um, because it's all on consequence. It's all on the happiness of uh, agents. Sometimes we're going to have to lie to maximise uh, pleasure and minimise pain. We can use the hedonic calculus here as well. For rule utilitarianism, we can actually form a rule, uh, which is always tell the truth. Now, this would be a weak rule because sometimes we can conceive of times where it just doesn't make sense, like for the Axeman, for example, it just doesn't make sense to tell the truth there. 
but almost all of the time we should be honest. Now, the preference utilitarian can also respond here. Um, our preference is to be told the truth. Importantly, though, it's uh, our preference is to be told the truth unless it isn't. And then we shouldn't be told the truth. But yeah, that the preference utilitarian approach, I, I don't really like. Now, Kant, of course, this approach is really helpful. Uh, both the first formulation and the second formulation is really good here. Now, in terms of the approach of Aristotle, uh, dishonesty is not a type of virtue that we should want to habituate. And so we should be honest as often as possible. Now, this may change uh, if we get the axeman at our door who's asking for the location of our friend. In that case, we're going to have to observe the virtue of, of loyalty, the duty to protect our friend. And so we might have to lie there because this is such an extreme example. It wouldn't undermine our character. OK, and then technique. So. Here we have example questions. Uh, these are the types of questions that you might be asked. Now, the key with this is just answer it like any other 25 mark question. I have a structure that works for me and for my students, uh, which I was taught when I was a student myself. And I understand that different colleges and, and uh, schools have different approaches. The way you answer this question is by, or question on applied ethics is, you need to evaluate how well each approach fares at dealing with the issue. So let's suppose that the issue is telling lies. Well, I know Kant's approach is very helpful. It's simple and it's effective. I know that the virtue ethics approach isn't very good. It's not very clear. Sometimes you should lie. Most of the time you shouldn't lie. I know the utilitarian approach as well. Personally, I don't really like. I don't think it's very effective because it isn't very clear either. We run into all sorts of problems. So they would be your basic points. Now, of course, you need to evaluate. And so you need to present them with counters as well. And so as long as saying that, uh, for example, the uh, utilitarian approach to telling lies, let's say, is, is, is good, you then need to supply a counter. And then you weigh them up. Now, the criticism that you use needs to be relevant. So I have an example plan here. This is P1. So this would be my first paragraph. This is on utilitarianism and eating animals. So I would apply Bentham and the idea that all pleasures are equal. Now, this is a good approach because it's simple. Don't eat animals because you're... you're um, causing more pain in the world with, with things like factory farms. Now, though there is some merit to this theory, I'm going to attack it with Novick's experience machine. Why that criticism? Well, because Bentham's idea hinges on all pleasures being equal. I'm going to attack the idea that all pleasures are equal. And if I can show that all pleasures aren't in fact equal, then his approach doesn't work. And so it isn't an effective approach. So you need to evaluate how well the normative theory deals with the issue. And then you need to counter the, th the theory itself. So you then need to counter utilitarianism in this case. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. If it has, please give it a like uh, and share it with your classmates. Thank you for watching.